everyone. In today's video, I want to explain what the select related and prefetch related lookups do in Django. So these become really important as the data in your database grows. You'll find that you'll need them eventually to avoid performance issues. So before I get into how they work exactly, I just want to tell you that I have a course available called Understanding Django. And if you want to learn more things from me about working with the database in Django or pretty much any of the standard features of Django, you can check out this course. So I'll leave a link in the description below so you can take a look at it. Now for the example, I'm going to be using Django debug toolbar just to illustrate what's going on. I'm not going to show you how this is set up, but I'll link to another video that shows you how the debug toolbar works. It's not really important how it's set up, but what's important is what I can get from it. And I'll show you that in a moment. Also, I have a template that's just blank and that's for the Django debug toolbar purposes. And I have a model that represents an e-commerce store. So I have a customer model, product model, order model, and a line item model. And then I have this script to just add some random data into my database. So I'll be using mostly the order model here, well, really the order model only directly. And then using that order model, I'll get the customer and the product as well. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna show you what happens when I do a regular query without adding anything extra. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to query my order model. So orders equals order.objects.all. And since query sets in Django are lazy, you have to actually use it for something, the result, before it will execute the query against the database. So what I'll do is I'll just loop over the orders. So for order and orders, I'll loop over it and I'll just assign it to a variable. Let's say temp equals order. And now if I go to my page and run it, I can see the query that gets executed over here by clicking SQL. And it tells me it's calling select star from example order. So if I just expand it, it's just giving me all of the actual columns, which is just star if you know SQL. So I'm just selecting all of the data from my order table. And it tells me the time uh, 0.54 milliseconds. So it's pretty quick. It's actually pretty slow, but it's the debug environment that I'm working on that is slow, not so much the overall query. So now if I go back to my code and instead of temp equals order, I say order dot customer, right? So this customer is from a relationship here. So this foreign key relationship back to the customer. So if I wanted to get something like the customer's name that is on a particular order, I will just call order dot customer and then I can do something like dot name after a customer if I wanted their name. So now let me go back to my app and refresh it. And you can see it's already taking longer. So I'll just sit here and wait until it's done. Okay, and it just finished for me, but I edited out the wait. But if I go over here to SQL again, and I wait for it to load, I can already see it's taken 422 milliseconds. So it's a lot slower than the original. And we see here, instead of one query, I have a bunch of queries. So as you can imagine, this is pretty inefficient and my order table has 5,000 orders in it. So what's happening is for each order, it's executing another query to get the customer information for that order. And this is where select related helps you. So select related, what it does is it's a way to tell Django what you want to be included in your query. So typically it only includes the data from the model that you're querying. So the table associated with that model. So typically it only includes data from the order table. And then when you wanna get data from a table that is related to the order table through a foreign key relationship, it will perform another query for each order that you have. And the more orders that you have in the database, the longer this will take. And this kind of goes against the idea of relational databases in the first place. Like the whole point is you can write queries that will give you all the data that you want at once. So to handle this, what you can do is use select related. So before the dot all, all I have to do is call select underscore related. And then inside of here, the string inside of select related, I just tell Django the field that I'm looking to have returned along with the order data. So in this case, it's going to be customer. And just know when you're using select related, you have to be using a foreign key relationship. So here, customer here is a foreign key relationship. And now when I do this, let's see if there's any change. So I'll go back here, refresh, and it already loaded. If I click here, we see I have one query again. It was only 
0.39 milliseconds. If I open this up, we see the query here is more complicated, but it's just one. So it's basically combining the order table and the customer table to give me all of the data at the same time. This means I'll be able to get the customer name, for example, on an order without having to write another query or execute another query against the database to get that information. So that's where select related comes into play. And a lot of people run into an issue where they don't really understand why their queries are getting slow. It's simply because more and more data is being added in the database. So when you first start building your app, you're probably only using test data. And then you launch the app, there's really no data. But as time goes on, more and more data gets added. And then your queries get slower and slower. And part of the reason is because you don't have something like select related or as we'll see in a moment, prefetch related in cases where it would be more efficient. So now let me show you prefetch related and it's related to select related. So prefetch related is kind of the equivalent of select related in a sense, but it works with many to many fields instead of just foreign keys. So the reason why you need prefetch related instead of just select related for both is because the many to many relationship occurs over multiple tables. It's not just two tables that are concerned, it's really three. So the two main tables and the association table. So it's not as easy to return the data in the same way as the select related, given the constraints of the Django query system ORM. So you kind of expect your data to be in a certain format when you use the uh, query set here. So they came up with prefetch related to give you an alternative to using this kind of idea with many to many relationships instead of just one to many or many to one, however they call it in Django. If you were actually writing queries directly, then there wouldn't be that big of a difference between uh, what you do for the select related and the prefetch related. But for Django purposes, there's a difference. So what I'll do is I'll comment this one out and I'll just do the same thing. So first I'll do the one without using it. So order.objects.all. And what I wanna do is instead of just having the uh, customer here, just one thing, I want to loop over all the products in an order. So I can do for product in order.products.all. And then I'll do the same thing where I'm just basically assigning to a variable. This doesn't actually do anything. So product. And now I'll go to my app and refresh. Okay, and the query just finished for me and I'll edit out the wait again. So here, once again, it performs 5,001 queries, pretty much one query for every order that I have in the database. And we see it took considerably longer. And I see I have all these queries here. So select from example product, inner join example line item, and it just gives me the data for each one of these. So it takes a long time and prefetch related will dramatically reduce that time. So prefetch related. And then just like the select related, I specify the field, so products, and prefetch related works on mini to mini. I'll go back over here, refresh. It's a little bit slower than the original example. And like I said, the slowness mostly has to do with my computer, not so much the query. But I go over here and we see I have two queries. So the second query is pretty big. But this is just the way that Django handles these prefetch related queries. So basically what it does is it figures out every ID that is returned from the first query. And then it takes those IDs and it gets everything in the second query. And then it uses Python to basically join the data together so you can use it in a way that it seems like it's all from one query when it's really two queries combined. So I hope that was able to help you if you've ever had database troubles in Django, like you had slow queries, maybe this was the issue. And I'm sure this will help if in the future you build a Django app and you want to make sure that you don't have any performance issues going forward. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.